While the Beast Crisis may have been averted, will Nightwing and the rest of the Titans team be able to rebuild their image? Well, let's hop into the pages of Titans issue number 8 that kick off to a brand new arc and find out together, shall we? So then, as we join the book, we're reminded that during the Big Beast World finale there, the darker side of Raven had actually taken control and managed to lock away her better half inside the jewel. Now, Evil Raven has actually brought that jewel to her demonic father Trigun so they can both gloat over their shared victory. Ah, uh, you know, I just love to see a father and daughter doing activities together, you know, it's just really heartwarming. Now, having an evil mole inside their team is bad enough, but believe it or not, the hits just keep on coming for the poor Titans team. In a very short amount of time, the team may have been able to stop the Necro Star Threat, defeat Brother Eternity, end the Beast Crisis, and literally bring back their friend Beast Boy from the Jaws of Death. But unfortunately, the road they took to get there didn't exactly make them a lot of friends. Amanda Waller and her brand new mysterious Cabal managed to manipulate the problems of the last event basically every step of the way, and now the Titans team have found themselves pariahs in the world media. In fact, as we hear on the news, there's actually an ideological divide starting to form amongst most people of whether they choose to back the brand new Bureau of Sovereignty, who have currently taken up residence in the Justice League's old Hall of Justice, or backing the new Titans Tower in Bloodhead. The whole thing is becoming more and more of a media circus too as the likes of Sergeant Steel are going on TV to try and drag the Titans and everything they've done, saying that they're dangerous, untested, untrusted. That if Beast Boy could be so easily corrupted, then any of them could be corrupted and start the next Great Plague. Also, to say nothing of Cyborg, who was able to use his powers to completely take control of America's massive drone fleet. Thankfully though, not everyone is drinking Waller's Kool-Aid right now as we see the actual mayor of Blue. Bloodhaven, Melinda Grayson, aka Dick Grayson's secret half-sister, is actively taking up for the team, saying that if the Titans didn't get involved, there's a good chance the Necrostar could very well have destroyed the entire planet. And that it's pretty rich that the Bureau of Sovereignty is saying that someone is dangerous when their whole plan to deal with the Beast Crisis was just to kill as many people as they could with drones and call it a day. Naturally, as you might have guessed, poor Garfield is taking this harder than anyone else, watching every piece of news coverage about him and the team in an act of what can only be described as pure self-flagellation. Thankfully though, Beast Boy won't have long to stew over this because before you can say Class 4 Hurricane, the Titans already have their next mission. It would seem that the Storm of the Century is ready to make landfall in Key West and only the Titans are ready enough to mobilize into action to save all the people. How do they plan to evacuate that many people? Well, with their brand new toy, the T-Jet, everyone. Yes, that's right, the Titans have themselves a jet and at first if you're like me, you're probably wondering, why do they need a jet? Can't Cyborg just open up a boom tube? Well, that's actually kind of the best part. Vic ends up opening a boom tube so the jet can fly through, meaning that the thing serves as basically a brand new mobile command center for the team. Also, doing things that way, imagine how much the team probably saves on fuel. They're like the only people in the world who maybe should have a private jet. Now, the Titans aren't the only ones helping out with the rescue effort. There's actually a whole bunch of ships out there in the bay that came ashore to try and rescue people. Unfortunately, many of them ended up getting stuck in the squall. Luckily, though, this is where Tempest actually gets a chance to shine after being returned to the team and his brainwash by Brother Eternity being broken. And you know what? It's just A, really nice to see him back to himself and helping out his friends, and B, it's also really cool to see him in a situation where his Atlantean powers give him a real edge. Over with Beast Boy, though, things are sadly going much less swimmingly. He goes into a home to try and rescue a father and his children, only for the dad to attack him with a baseball bat. As we discover, this guy is something of a 24-hour news junkie and as such has completely bought into Amanda Waller's anti-Titan smear job hook, line, and sinker. This dude is so brainwashed and propagandized he would very literally rather let him and his young children die than let the Titans swoop on in and save him. Well, geez, you know, this must be a comic book fantasy because it's not like we see stuff like this in real life all the damn time, sadly. Now, it's right around here as the comic starts winding down, things get very interesting. Evil Raven actually steps on in and is the first and loudest to defend Beast Boy's honor from this guy. At first, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, she's trying to maintain her cover within the Titans, but why does she want to maintain her cover? Couldn't she just kill them all in their sleep? Well, yes, of course she could, but as we flash back to her conversation with Trigun, we see that Evil Raven is actually playing a very devious and very long game with our heroes. As Evil Raven 
Raven so eloquently puts it, Trigun's most loyal generals were always his children. Evil Raven wants generals of her own, and she thinks the Titans would do just fine. All she needs to do is slowly but surely ingratiate herself to the team, and then eventually corrupt them one by one, like, you know, a demon would. Trigun is absolutely overjoyed by this plan, and in fact, he says that all the planets are beginning to align for a great prophecy to take place. That Evil Raven might not just be Evil Raven, but might be on the way to becoming a foretold being of pure evil known as the Black-Winged Queen. And so that was Titans issue number eight, everybody, and overall I thought this issue did a really solid job picking up the spare from the end of Beast World and really running with it. The Titans team is on the ropes now, not only having to save the day, but also trying to salvage their image against the really insurmountable odds that are Amanda Waller. In fact, between this book, Green Arrow, and what looks to be coming down the pipe for Batman, they really are building Waller up as the biggest bad in DC this year. Also, while I know it's been done once or twice before, the idea that the Titans team now has an evil member within their own ranks trying to tear them down from the inside out. Hey, you know what they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and that's always a classic, so why not dust it off again for this run? Overall, I enjoyed this issue, and I am enjoying the Titans as basically the Justice League stand-in now in the DC universe. The book feels important and like a must-read. Which is why I'd give eight it another Aaron, nice 8 out of 10. Jewel again, and if you're seeing my face right now, that means you watched at the end of the video, and I'll always be grateful for that. Retention helps in this crazy YouTube game, and so does becoming a patron. If you head on down to the description, you can find a link to my Patreon page. Recently just redid all the tiers. A lot of cool stuff offering up there. Exclusive commentaries, exclusive polls, uh, behind-the-scenes concept art for Capes and Quest. That's the brand new D&D show I've started soon. Never been a better time to become a patron. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and help the channel grow and, you know, help me continue to deliver content like what you just saw. So I want to thank you all and I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.